Hey Internet, it's your old friend Dominic here with the All American Casino Guide, a channel dedicated to providing you with all those tips, tricks, tutorials, and trivia that you could possibly need to know about casinos and casino games. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe to the channel and ring a ding ding that notification bell because it's the only way you'll be notified every single time we upload a video to the channel. Today I'm going to be explaining small ball poker and what that means, so you're certainly going to want to sit back and listen up. Small ball poker is an advanced style of play which was initially coined by Dan Harrington in his Harrington on Hold'em series of tournament strategy books. I actually have been using this strategy inadvertently for years. I didn't know at the time it was called small ball poker. It's just something that I've been doing since I started playing this game many, many years ago. This style of play though has gained a lot of recognition through Daniel Negrano's articles and videos, namely the most winning poker player of all time with 32.4 million in earnings. But what is small ball poker? It's a strategy which involves playing a wider range of starting hands and playing more aggressively. You might be saying to yourself, hey wait Dom, you've been telling me to only play tight, to play only certain hands that have the highest statistical advantage and to play tight with my money. But if you use this strategy effectively, then you'll be able to see some big returns in the long run because you use small bets and small raises and this saves you from losing too much money in the long run. Uh, certainly when there are certain hands do not work out for you. So why can small ball poker be so effective? Small ball poker can be effective because it creates this illusion that you're very loose at the table, all right? That just makes it seem like you're a very loose player and that you don't really know what you're doing. Everyone's gonna think you're nuts. Therefore, you should receive more action from opponents when you actually do have a big hand because they'll perceive you as a loose, aggressive player and may even feel that you're more likely to try to bluff them out of a pot than rather play a good hand. If you play small ball poker correctly in the long run, the amount that you win from your opponents when they do call you should substantially outweigh the amount of money you lose uh, from consistently calling mid-level or weaker hands. Uh, this is the reason why it's important to make small bets and small raises instead of those large, stronger bets. Therefore, small ball poker benefits from players who call you down with mediocre hands because they do not give you the credit that you deserve for having a strong hand. It's worth noting though, it's very important that you make your opponents aware of your style of play. And I'm not saying simply go ahead and say, hey everybody, I'm playing small ball poker style because that kind of gives the game away. It's important to remember you're relying on your opponents to be aware of the way you're playing but not to know that you're actually playing a ruse up. If your opponents are not thinking about how you're playing, then you're not gonna have as much success with this play style as you would otherwise. If other players at the table are loose and are gonna call you anyways, then you should pretty much abandon this strategy altogether and play a more tight, aggressive style rather than play this loose, small ball poker style. As you play a few hands, it's gonna take a while for you to develop this persona at the table of someone who's playing fast and loose. But it's important that as you play each hand that you personify this persona and you really perpetuate it so everyone thinks that you don't have a clue what you're doing. It's very important and worth noting though that you make your opponents aware of your style of play early on. And I don't mean just yelling out to the entire table as soon as you sit down, hey guys, I'm gonna try out this new small ball poker strategy that I heard all about. Because that kind of gives the game away. You need to be a little bit more clandestine, a little bit more secretive about it. But you also need to very early on create a persona for yourself and that you need to keep up that illusion that you kind of don't know what the hell you're doing and that you're playing very fast and very loose. It's very important though that if your opponents are not thinking too much about it and instead are willing to call you no matter what, you need to abandon this strategy fairly early on because you're gonna end up losing a lot of money. Um, and it's really not gonna be as effective as it would be if they were aware of your style of play. Go back to playing tight and aggressive rather than this small ball poker play style. It's worth noting though that this is a strategy that experienced players usually adopt only after years of playing tight, strategically mathematical poker. I was just watching our beginner tutorials first so you have a firm grasp on those ideas. Overall, play as many hands as you can. Learn how to play post-flop well and make sure you use a good starting hand strategy in case someone actually calls you. When you play on weaker starting hands, only bet on cards that have true potential. So a couple of different examples of uh, certain hands that you should be playing 
in a sound strategy, of course, you have your suited connectors, okay? So this is probably one of the best situations you can find yourself in, like for a nine and 10 of diamonds. That's a great example. Uh, you have a lot of options here. Uh, these are two fairly high ranking cards. Uh, they're also both diamonds, so you, you're well on your way to a flush, and you're also well on your way to a straight, which are, of course, are very good hands. Uh, other hands, you know, you have uh, ace and king, so also known as the AK. Uh, that's a good part of a straight, even though they're not uh, connected, but they also have even better ranks than this particular hand. Uh, you know, even jack and nine when it's on suit, but you have an inside straight to pull off. Uh, even pocket pairs, I mean, those are obviously the type of cards you should be playing. But uh, even though you're playing a little bit more loose than normal, you still shouldn't be playing hands like two seven, for example. That's gonna be a losing hand no matter what. I mean, even a crazy person thinks that two seven is a bad idea. Overall, you want to keep this persona going as long as possible. And it's worth noting that this strategy works best if you're a bit of a good actor, um, you certainly want to throw out this attitude where you're more interested in the entertainment factor of the game and less on the winning every single hand or winning the money element. And, you know, you make it seem like this is just something you do for entertainment and you really aren't a active poker player. Um, you want to give this almost foolish persona that people can believe, but don't be too obvious about it. So I've spoken about the what and certainly the why, but what about the when? When is the ideal time to play small ball poker? Well, the answer to that question is early as possible. You need to start getting in early on to create this persona of a person who really doesn't know what they're doing. And you need to be playing at a time when the blinds are small, specifically in relation to the size of your chip stack. Early on, you're gonna be able to afford these foolish plays, but as time goes on, you're going to find yourself in a position where the blinds have reached a point where it's going to be not in your best interest to play like this anymore. And you're gonna to have to abandon this strategy and go back to a tight, aggressive strategy more based in mathematical probability. It's also worth noting that unless your opponents are completely oblivious, they're going to realize that something's up and uh, you're full of it. So that concludes our explanation on small ball poker strategy. By now you should be able to understand how you can use it to take advantage of your opponents by applying it directly to your game. So my question is to you, have you ever used this strategy to win? If so, go ahead and leave it as a comment down below. And guys, while you're at it, clickety-clack that like button, punch that subscribe button, ring-a-ding-ding -ding that notification bell, because it's the only way you'll be notified every single time we upload a video like this to our channel. And guys, remember, sharing is caring. So go ahead and hit that share button while you're at it. My name's Dominic. This is the All-America Casino Guide reminding you, play responsibly.